So when the Harris Conservatives were returned to power with a big majority, Bromel was invited to the Premier's dinner. How are you, sir? How's everything? Oh, good. Yeah? Fucking brutal, man. Oh, oh, oh. frozen for an hour, yeah. The Premier's dinner. A lavish $400 a plate fundraiser to replenish the Tory war chest. Well, hi, Al. How's everything? Well, you're, you're looking younger now, anyway. And when it came time to hand out the thank yous, Premier Harris jokingly dished out a promotion for his favorite cop. It has been 32 years since any political party in Ontario won back-to-back -back majority governments. Think about 1967. Think about how long ago that was. Back in 1967, Craig Vermel wasn't born yet in 1967, and now he leads the Toronto Police Force. I mean, this is a long time ago. 300 police officers went out for Premier Mike Harris. What's in it for the union? Well, I guess the main thing is that they, if, if they stick to what they said, that their, their um, mandate on law and order is going to benefit us professionally. You know and I know that nothing in politics is free. It's always, you scratch my back, I'll scratch your back. Right. Well, I mean, you scratch theirs, what are they going to do for your back? Like I said, bring in their mandate, which we expect, what they said. If they don't, then we might have a problem four or five years from now. How are you, kiddo? How's everything? Nice to see you. Good. How are you? Oh, thanks so. Hi, right, how are you? Nice to see you again. Hi, Liz. Had a good summer? Excellent. Sorry. We're ready to rumble. Oh, okay. anytime. <laughs> in Toronto, management of the police is in the hands of a seven-member group called the Police Services Board. Over the last few years, only one board member, Judy Scrow, has had the guts to stand up to the police union. And she even went so far as to compare the men in black to a bunch of redneck cops in Louisiana. And she didn't pull any punches after a high-speed police chase killed a 73-year-old man in May of 1998. Have the coppers been watching too many uh, Starsky and Hutch? Well, it sure looks like it when I look at these guys. It just scares the devil out of you when you see what they're doing. I think they need to be aware that there's going to be a process that's going to hold them accountable for these kinds of uh, car chases. The men in black were fed up. They decided it was time to make an example out of Judy Scrow, a little trick they learned in Los Angeles. We understand that you were told by the L.A. guys that one way to get instant respect was to take down a mayor or a city councillor. Correct. But if you found somebody that's an enemy of the police, uh, we don't want them around. So you try and get them kicked out of office. Pretty simple. You're going to keep all the other loud mouths, you're going to keep their mouths shut. Now that sounds like intimidation. Uh, you can call it that. In the fall of 1998, Bromel and his boys demanded a meeting with the police services board. There was only one item on the agenda. Did he tell you to keep your mouth shut? The whole intent of the uh, hour and 45 minute grueling session was for me to shut up, period. The man in charge of the police services board, Norm Gardner, is a gun owner. And he's a great pal of Craig Bromel. Were there any minutes kept on that meeting? Well, it was, as I say, it was an informal gathering. Of the police services board? It was not an official board meeting. But they this made was, sure Judy Scroll was there. Well, Judy was the uh, center of, the part of their complaints. On the hot seat? Well, it was a hot seat. Every one of their executive took a shot at me. There were seven of them. Each, all seven had their own list of questions and comments that I had made. And each one of them had a turn at me on an organized effort. Sounds like they weren't gentlemen. No, they were absolute bullies, each and every one of them. I didn't think that they were that rough. I thought they were going to be a lot more difficult on the subject. They had a few people there that all, you know, made a, contri a contribution. Well, they all took their shots. They took their shots, you know, but was it that terrible? I don't think so. The men in black left with a warning. From now on, no comments to the media unless approved by the union. One of the members said, we don't know what to do when the media calls us. And Jack Ritchie, the vice president, said, when they call you, you call us and we'll tell you what to say. And at that point, he stood up and handed out the business cards for the union to the members of the board. They were going to tell you what to say? He says, you, when, when the media call you on an issue of police pursuits or strip searches or any of the other issues to do with policing, 
You call us and we'll tell you what to say. The battle lines were drawn, but the mayor of Toronto, Mel Lastman, seen here rolling into police headquarters, certainly wasn't about to pick a fight with Craig Bramell. I want a safe city. I want our kids to be able to go back to school again. I don't want them to be lying in gutters. I don't want crime in the streets. I want people to feel safe in the streets of Toronto. Craig Bramell from the uh, Police Association, see the mayor. Last November, the mayor was doing his best to stay on Brumel's good side. Hey, how's my favorite cup? <laughs> how are you, sir? How's everything? Good. Very good. How are you? Great to see you again. You're, you're you know? looking good. I like that beard. Yeah. Well, the problem was that when you <laughs> called me the pussycat, I had a grace on a lot more <laughs> tougher. Things are going well. So how are you feeling? Feeling good. Yeah, you're doing a great job. Things, thank you. Things are going well. There's three politicians I've come across in, in my career as a president that are just would do anything for the police and just love the police and think we're doing a great job. Who's that? Mayor Lastman, uh, Norm Gardner, and uh, Mike Harris, the premier. I mean, these people have a legitimate concern for law and order. I mean, these scumbag politicians that come up and say, uh, um, go after Gardner, just haven't got a clue. I mean, these people couldn't tie a shoe, and then last one are... There are a lot of scumbag politicians? Yeah, there are. Anywhere. Anywhere in society. For uh, 10 to 12 years, our rate on the inside of the... Bromel sees enemies everywhere, and he's so concerned with protecting the union that he set up what amounts to his own spy agency. Believe it or not, since we announced private investigators are working for us, and going to target our enemies. We probably had 120 complaints. Stuff people thought we could use against us. It comes down to personality conflict. And, that's and, pretty scary, though, eh? I mean, uh, but I, I you think have private investigators to get your enemies? Why not? Well, if anybody can give me a reason, why not? I'll listen, but nobody's ever come up with a reason that, um, you know, they, everybody was screaming, but I can tell you, since we announced it, Nobody's saying anything. Yeah, but you talk about the thin blue line, you don't think thin skin too. Oh no, we've always been thin skinned. I mean, we, hey, I mean, we're human. I mean, if things are said about us uh, that is not true and it's damaging toward us, well, now we have things in place with the association where we can, we can prove them wrong and then go after them. And for, for the head down to Hamilton and Queen. I was told by senior. Um, police officers and people in the policing community that I was that I was being followed and that I should be extremely careful. It was common knowledge around the uh, major parts of our police service that, uh, that the union was doing a job on scroll and they had lots of dirt on her and, and this kind of thing and they would be releasing it at an appropriate time. See, this sounds like McCarthyism. It certainly sounds like a very scary situation for anybody to be in. Former San Jose Chief of Police, Joseph McNamara. I think if the police uh, investigate politicians and it's not a legitimate criminal investigation, then they're really subverting democracy and freedom. Because what's essential is that the people elect the politicians and they make the decisions. If they are somehow intimidated from making those decisions because of some kind of blackmail or some kind of threat from the police. You no longer have a free society. You have a police state. But last year in Toronto, the city politicians seemed unconcerned about Bramell's growing power. Judy Scrow departed for federal politics. Her seat on the board was filled by none other than the union's best friend, Mayor Mel Lastman. I solemnly swear that I will not disclose any information. But Craig Bramell wasn't taking anything for granted. Your lawyer says that the union has some pretty nasty stuff on file that it could use just in case. What the heck is he talking about? Well, the last person I'm going to tell is you, part of the strategy, so that's for us to know. And if we need it, we'll use it. Is that, that's, is that a form of blackmail? I don't see it as blackmail. That kind of sounds like a declaration of principle to me. When we return, Craig Bramell turns up the heat. Well, he's a black hat. I mean, he wears the black hat. He loves wearing it. 
You're not worried at all about the perception that you guys are no. acting like thugs? No. Are you worried that the citizenry are no. a little afraid of that? No, not at all. 